Hi everyone. We're about to start the Curator and Artist Relationships talk. I'd like to introduce Donnie Chung Hung, artist, and Erin Lee, curator. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, Donnie. Um, uh, welcome everyone to the talk. Uh, my name is Erin Lee. I'm an assist associate curator at Daigun Contemporary, and um, I would say my main specific work, performance works, and um, participatory works, and also poetics of materiality. And today I'm really happy to be having this conversation with Donnie. Jan, maybe can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Um, I mostly work with uh, charcoal on canvas and uh, with some paintings, maybe acrylic, something like that. And then lately I've been doing some videos, um, like animations, and I'm quite interested in bringing installation into my practice as well. And yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> Yeah, we are having a show now in Tycoon as well. It's called Emu Gym, which yeah. is curated by Erin. So yeah, maybe we can also tell you more about how we met and why we were sitting here talking to each other. Um, it, it started in 2018, I think. Uh, one of my good friends, who is actually not in art, uh, he's a professor in biology, he told me, oh, Donnie Jen <laughs> is my favorite artist in Hong Kong. And I'm like, who is Donnie? <laughs> and I just felt so embarrassed. And um, so Donnie back then was having a solo exhibition at AM Space. Um, and so I immediately like looked her up and then I started following her other exhibitions at Negative Space and also like later Donnie was uh, selected. Residency at Shop House. And yes. I think we have a talk there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and also I think we met at Tycoon at some point. We just bumped into each other and Aaron started to asking me about my concepts of work and how I think about uh, the, the artworks that I'm doing. Yeah, so um, I realized Donnie is actually really close to me work-wise. Like she was working as a docent in Daigun Contemporary. So one day I just, was just like walking to the <laughs> galleries, like interviewing the artists like out of the blue. And also it was because I have that I had then been following her work for like three years and I was just like, it would be really amazing if there could be a chance for us to collaborate. And this chance did arise, as you see, with um, like the emo gym slides. So I was curating an exhibition, uh, which is actually now on in Daigun Contemporary, but then it was around t one to two years back when uh, I was just like thinking about which artist I wanted to collaborate with. And so, yeah, we had that really nice talk and uh, that's how, how we started meeting each other. Yeah. Um, and so today, yeah, we're gonna be focusing on curator artist relationships, which is, you know, like could be so many fold. And of course our personal experiences might be limited, but then, um, so yeah, we're really happy to be- Happy to be here and share Yeah, all maybe your you questions or your experiences too, um, this theme too. Um, so maybe we start a little bit more with how Donnie, like Donnie's practices, so you can understand where we are coming from. So maybe Donnie, could you tell us how you started your art practice? I think I started like quite early. I think I started painting like from really young, like 10 maybe. And then I started to um, um, just keep painting. And then towards when I was in university, I just, uh, study fine arts in CUHK and then I started to cooperate with some galleries as well. I guess it's textbook but um, I think the more like meaningful starting point of that is that I, um, I started realizing I wanted to find a connection between myself and the world and my surroundings and how I use art to intersect this world and um, and also realizing how making artworks is like uh, making a bunch of decisions, but how to use these decisions to manifest the idea that I wanted to express. I guess that is the starting point. Do you want me to talk a little bit more about the process? Yeah, because I think for a lot of people, like 
being a painter is kind of like an abstract idea. Like, how do you actually conceptualize mm -hmm. one work? Can you share a bit more about that? I think how an idea came to my mind and then towards where uh, the artwork actually is done, there are a lot of different process. One thing that I find I do a lot is taking photos from the surroundings. Sometimes I don't even know why do I take that picture, but then after several of these things happen, I kind of find or sort out the thoughts like why am I interested in those things and also kind of finding the meanings behind um, the appearance of our surroundings. Like uh, usually I work with uh, the subject of light and I like to compare um, the city lights or the lights from the moon or star or the sun from the nature and from there I develop uh, some of the meanings behind uh, these kind of signs. And, and also painting is not the only medium you use, right? Like what about animation or installations? How do you think about these different mediums? I think um, for animations, because of the pandemic, so I started to learn about animations and how to do that. I just do really simple animations. And I think from there, it adds dynamics to the images that I had in mind. And I think that is, um, I'm creating this virtual space in um, the animation. And I think it also related to how I see a space. Mm. Cool. And, mm. and also, um, maybe we can also talk a little bit about you. Like, what, how did you start with curating? And yeah. Uh, sure. So I guess I started, um, I graduated with like a degree in uh, art history and sociology. And I didn't immediately go into like art curating per se. But um, I had a lot of work uh, experience related to art, like fundraising or like organizing art events or um, what else did I do? <laughs> or maintaining an exhibition, you know, like being a docent or like um, uh, or being like a tour, like an art tour guide, these kind mm -hmm. of experiences that people don't necessarily associate with curating, but then later, now looking back, I realize these are actually all part of a curator's possible job, especially like I wasn't, I thought, oh, you, you know, like as a curator, maybe one, the main jobs is like research and write and conceptualize the exhibition uh, content the artist. But then like when I actually start curating, I realized it's so much more than that. Uh, you have like to basically project manage and then also um, there is, of course, the like the artist lia liaison, the the oversee the artwork production, and then also a really important part is the like the responsibility towards the audience, like how to understand your audience, um, and make sure like to the framing, the contextualizing is relevant to the audience we're dealing with. Of course, I come more from like a institutional background, like uh, um, now with Daegun Contemporary. So we actually have a more direct relationship with uh, the Hong Kong public. Like every day we walk into the galleries, we observe the audience and then how, because of sometimes with some curators I've worked with before, um, like they fly into Hong Kong, they curate a show and they leave. But then um, for me, like how the show actually grows or how to constantly like make sure it functions well or how audience div like interacts with it, that's really important. So actually with uh, Emo Gym, we're able to kind of like fine tune certain things like audience saying mm -hmm. like, why don't you have comfortable seats in, in like a long video work, leads kind of, things, I, I think it's also part of like a curator's responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, Going so. back to the relationship between artist and curator, <laughs> like how do you spot artists and that you chose to collaborate with? Yeah, um, that's actually a question I often get asked. And for me, the, the relationship between artist curator is really like a long term one. You don't just kind of like walk on the street one day and say, and see like a work and then feel like, oh, this is the, the kind of artist I want to collaborate with. Like really, I usually follow them qu for quite some time, like 
with Donny like four years and then with some other artists in Emo Gym, I've been following them for seven, eight years and just waiting for like the right opportunity, like the right theme to come up to work with them. So, um, so yeah. So it's not like one of like, you it definitely them for years. Yeah, also I feel it's important to kind of like stay in touch with artists to like, see their new exhibitions, mm -hmm. to visit their studios, to chat with them. A lot of times, like, the collaboration idea doesn't necessarily come from, like, an official studio visit or something. It's more like a party or, like, casual... Dinner. Um, yeah, <laughs> dinner, where you kind of, you're just, you know, checking up on their recent projects and then realize, oh, actually, like, the, they, are, they are working on the theme I'm also thinking about, and then you find that match. So I feel like... Yeah, it, I, I tend to think of curator as like a companion to artists that keep seeing them grow and then maybe also um, pushing them to grow in projects. Yeah, and yeah. on to the actual experience. Let's talk about our Emo collaboration. <laughs> a little. Yes, I remember um, the first time you approached me is I think at at Shop House and then um, you went to the residency that I had in there and then we were talking a little bit about what you wanted to do, your concepts behind and then what do I have and do we have anything intersex or um, like overlapping that we could put in the show. Yeah, I remember like Donnie was making all this paintings about light and space, but then actually um, my show was, a, the, the concept was about vulnerability. So I wasn't like 100% sure whether like she would be a good fit. So uh, I think like that talking and, and that exchange was really important to to figure out, you know, whether this, this collaboration would actually work. And then mm -hmm. when I told her like, oh, maybe like what you are making recently, um, they could be a little bit too realistic for like the kind of realistic looking landscape they might not fit the show so well thematically because i think um with this oh. exhibition yeah yeah i remember you said uh the concept of the curation is like from living room maybe yeah to the bedroom you yes can talk a lot. yeah so i was thinking about maybe commissioning a more intimate painting from donnie and then she was instantly like oh my god yes uh, that sounds really like i know exactly what we were talking about yeah. that it would be really interesting for donnie to explore uh creating something that's not like a possible landscape somewhere but more mm -hmm. like a reflection of someone's uh, mind i think you yeah you see these two paintings here and and then yeah. basically this is the the the, the uh, older ones that work. I always do and yeah. I think a lot of that times work is about exterior world and how um, the exterior surroundings would um, represent some of the uh, ideas that I had in mind but um, you pointing out that it could be more about like a mental state and that had also really inspired me so later on I developed it into another exhibition in gallery exit that happened like uh, February I think yeah. so that one is more about um, like starting uh, to create a space that comes from nowhere it's just purely from imagination and I think that had reflected a lot of the mental state that we were talking about. Yeah, so it just felt really good when when like the artist says like I, I know exactly what we were thinking and let's try this together. And then of course that was not the end of the, the discussion. Like mm -hmm. later Johnny was making all the sketches and then I visited her at the full time studio and then we were just also discussing, you know, which of the many directions would fit the show best, and um, I really enjoy those like discussions over a period of one year. Yeah, yeah, I would we say we had some really delicious dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important part in like an artist curator relationship. Make sure there's food and drinks around you. Yes. Um, yeah. So maybe let's also talk about. Oh yeah, and what do you expect as a curator and how do you think um, is that really different from your expectation yes like I, I guess as I mentioned I was thinking of curator as like a pretty like one direction or like a um, research uh, and writing and focus job but then later I realized like the field of 
curating is actually also expanding. Uh, and generally, I feel curators are thinking that their responsibilities are now including even more and more. Like sometimes, also depends on, of course, it depends on what kind of curator you are, like whether you're an independent one or you're working in a gallery or in an institution, a museum. Um, but then, yeah, a lot of oftentimes curator can also be involved in like really tedious tasks. But then these tedious tasks like I don't know, moving heavy things, <laughs> <laughs> or thinking about like the safety of certain how to the, the placement of certain works, and uh, of course like the, how to market the show, and all these details. I think they actually matter a lot. So I feel to be a good curator, one also has to pay attention to this whole like how to bridge um, the artist's imagination of the work and the audience reception of the work, because oftentimes I feel it's interesting to have the curator's perspective um, on how how the work is perceived mm. because with the artist like basically um, there there is one perspective that's yourself <laughs> so uh, yeah that's that's what I think is interesting about actually um, learning to be a curator and then now with all this like um, digital development. There are so many new mm. things to learn as a curator. So, yeah, just really exciting to keep like virtual tour, or virtual yeah. Exhibition. How to best present a show virtually? Whether we do like a VR 360, mm. but actually with this exhibition, we decided not to do that because we just feel it's such like an immersive experience. And so instead, we actually did more like artist interview videos that you will see very soon, and then also like um, curator led video um, mm -hmm. that's like 10 minutes and you can also see these online so yeah like public programming or like the outreach part is also s really important for me um, and yeah I and and Donnie I'm interested in how like your practice also changed um, throughout your the, your, your career up to mm -hmm. now and then also is there any major exhibition you saw that actually really changed? Um, I think when I just graduated, I went to uh, Europe, I visited uh, the sculpture project at Munster at like 2017, I think, and I saw a work by the artist Gregor Schneider, who is a German artist. Um, I went there and it's it's an experience. It's not just something visual. And let me describe a little bit about the work. And it's like you open a door, and then um, it's it's a room with a certain atmosphere that's a little calm, or like silent, something like that. And then you open a, another door. It's another kind of like the first room. It's like two living rooms, and then the third one I remember is a bathroom or something. And then I open another door is the exit. So I open the next door is the first living room. So it's like the experience being uh, repeated um, twice, I think. And then, and that one is, it really confuses me and I really love that work and it changes a little bit about how I perceive and artwork and also I think every time when we walk to an exhibition it's also an experience instead of just looking at an artwork there are so many things that are under consideration like lighting or the atmosphere or how you place everything I think you also uh, like you're a curator so you will have to deal with all that but like I always um, I also think about a little bit more about the execution of the um, things that I do because mostly I work with painting so it's like and it's uh, so sometimes I try to play with a little bit more on animation or a uh, little bit of installation but I try to explore more but I think I'll need the help with a curator because there are a lot more that could add to the idea of mine. Mm, you like don't, but uh, Donnie, you had experience um, organizing your own solo exhibitions. Uh, how, d like, did you think about maybe engaging a curator in those processes, or what was your experience like organizing a show mm. for yourself? Well, I organized the show 
like last year, I think at Food Tech Building, and it's my solo show. And I think I, because I'm those person who really want to do everything by myself, and then ending up it, it's quite impossible. <laughs> and also, um, I really want to experience once like what is there that I need to be considered. Um, for example, like the captions, how do I do it? And then the lighting, how do I do it? Um, the, the, how the paintings being viewed, like uh, sequentially, like, yeah. yeah. The, the flow of yeah. the audience. So, but that is just a lot to deal with. So if I, I do that again, I will ask you to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, that's actually quite an interesting topic because, um, of course, like curating a solo exhibition and curating mm. a group exhibition, I, I feel is like quite, quite different. Different, and uh, but yeah, I haven't curated a solo show yet, so I I don't know. Like maybe we'll we'll see how it actually feels. But I feel with curating a group exhibition, like the mm. curator's role is also to kind of balance uh, different artists um, or the different artworks' interests, like how you actually have them coexist in one visual space but then especially with like sound or mm -hmm. um, these kind of more intrusive elements actually a curator really have to think like holistically how how to place all the works so they actually you know uh, it's the be the most suitable way to present them and and mm -hmm. do justice to the works altogether so I feel yeah, sometimes, of course, there's also like artists organized group exhibitions. And there, there's as actually one interesting one in Fo Tan that's organized by Kong Jun Hei, Mark, Mark Jung, who you just listened to this morning, and Dave, and uh, Go Sing Tong. And when I asked them, okay, so you're four artists who organize the so, uh, a group show. How do you deal with all these dynamics? Mm. Who occupies which space? And for me as a curator, that's just like so interesting. And they're like, yeah, we are good friends. So we, we love, but we also kind of just like fight with each other. So with, like some of them would occupy, occupy like call or call dips on one space. And the other is like, okay, I'm just gonna put my work really close to your work. So they kind of like affect each other intimately yeah. um, and then or like they put a wall next to the other person's work it's just like so interesting to hear how without like a mm. organizer people also self-organize I guess that's also like another way of co-curating I'm not sure um, mm. but yeah it's uh, oh yeah there's, I yeah. remember once I was having the similar experience in negative space to show that you went yeah. like I was having a group exhibition with my friends, Joseph, Lee, and Chang Ting, and then we were uh, having the same issues. Like, yeah. we just wait, everybody's artwork arrived, and then we try to place everything, see which one speaks to each other. And then I think it, there is also some maybe um, statements, things that we need to deal with. And yeah, I yeah. think you may also have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, yes, of course, like, especially with an exhibition with many new commissions and everything mm, is still in right. shift. And that's like the most interesting part. You're playing this like mega complicated um, game with many moving parts. And then mm. it's, it's just like really interesting to kind of constantly stay in touch with different artists about how get to get their updates on their project and then see how the whole show comes together. So yeah, yeah I, I, I find that like a really fascinating part of the process. Mm -hmm. And also I guess if it's, we just talked about the difference between solo exhibition and um, group exhibition. And then of course with like curating a show with the international artist and the mm -hmm. local artist, I feel um, the, the relationship is also quite different. Like with local artists, like this time, they understand the context of Hong Kong, the audience, but then of course with a lot of our pro previous projects at Daigun Contemporary, mm -hmm. like I'm sure a lot of you have seen like Tino Segal or uh, Francis Alice, like uh, especially during COVID time, if some, some overseas artists might not even be able to travel here. And then it's really like the curator's responsibility to um, to deliver or to relay like what kind of audience we're facing here and what kind of 
world we are in, like especially for instance with Tino Segal, he has such an amazing collection of um, of uh, I wouldn't call them performances of works uh, and and participatory works. Um, and, but so it's really up to the curator what 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 should Hong Kong see now and and to also. Yeah, find find, uh, and especially with like, for instance, artists like Tino Segal who don't agree to use any visual material for the promotion. So, how as a curator, as an institution, how do we promote such an exhibition and get people engaged? I feel that's also like um, one of the best challenges. And 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 yeah, how to we present it just with his name and then with maybe like a slogan. So it's almost like promoting a. Um, theater piece, yeah, mm. and then also especially uh, with new commissions from overseas artists, um, oftentimes like if resources allow, they will come and do a side visit, but then with the short amount of time they have in Hong Kong, it's also l the curator's responsibility to um, to suggest things, to like keep talking to the artist about what's worth seeing or what might be relevant to the artist uh, commission. For instance, with Francis Ali's solo exhibition we had one, two years ago in Dagon Contemporary, uh, we commissioned him to make uh, children's games, um, three videos, mm -hmm. and then Francis had all this, like before he came to Hong Kong, he had different ideas about what kind of games Hong Kong children play. And then these information you, you can't really find online. So we had to, yeah, like tell him that maybe- Suggesting. Yeah, role. like jumping ropes might not be the most common um, mm. game we see here. And yeah, all these like cultural context and um, that kind of discussion, negotiation, suggestion, I feel th these are all really interesting parts. Mm. How about, um, any exhibitions that you might have went to see that had changed or influenced you as a curator? Yeah, definitely. Uh, a, a, I would say uh, definitely a lot of um, exhibitions overseas, like um, Echigo Tumari Triennial, uh, when I was still doing like the Hong Kong U art, fine art um, studies, I went there and it really changed my mind about how works actually blends into people's life and not just city people's life, like village people's life and how it really responds to the site and, and engages the audience. Like I remember there's a work in the field, really like um, installation and there were like poetry, um, around, like framing the, fr framing the landscape we are seeing. And that really um, got me interested in like size specific works and and participatory works and also like the the poetics in how people uh, or artists use material and that's why I also find in your work like the the poetry mm -hmm. um, is really interesting and yeah so what what do you think about like the poetics in the city yeah I think? or like how philosophy influences your art making well, recently I'm thinking about, um, I think poetics in the city is something that I always wanted to explore. I think um, because we are seeing the surroundings around us every single day and how, or how did the imagination go and uh, intersect our surroundings? I think that's very important in our daily life practice, I, gu I guess, and well, it's important to me. And, <laughs> and also, um, it's that uh, we realize a lot of the laws in uh, the surroundings, like when we pick up this thing, it will drop because of gravity, um, the light shines, there's always shadows. So these kind of things that always happens. So. I think um, in the paintings that I have, I always wanted to break through those um, laws that we realized. I think, uh, oh, and the commission work that we did in Taekwon, that one is also one of them. I call the painting um, reflective leg, but apparently I was doing something completely opposite, like just um, painting the leg as like a matte black surface, like something that would suck you in or something. Oh, this yeah, one. Yeah, right here on the left. Yeah. And also, I think 
um, earlier I've mentioned about the lights, like how um, because we always see these different lights surrounds us, and I always like to imagine that they might have meanings that reveal to us if we look closely. So it's something that I'm working on right now, and mm. yeah, and after um, animations. That had also changed a little bit about how I do the paintings. I think different experiences or different mediums just make me um, kind of, it's like cross training. Have you heard of cross training? It's like when you uh, play uh, football, then you will play a little bit of basketball to kind of realize a little bit something different, and then you can go back to football. It's something like that. So I think um, doing different mediums is talking about um, the same message, but in a different way. Yeah. Mm. And w as you are kind of doing your cross training, what kind of role do you think like curator can play in like your development or mm -hmm. like do you kind of constantly t talk to like other curators to kind of get mm, I don't know to, to have exchange of ideas or see how if they can have some feedback on your new works and mm -mm. I think um, throughout our conversations before I think you're very good at picking out like sim similarities between different works I think Maybe um, maybe you have mentioned uh, animations that I did before. Maybe it's quite similar to the work that I really like I just mentioned by Gregor Schneider. Yeah, something like that from a different perspective to see the same thing. I think that would uh, help me to get inspired or see the same thing in a different way. And also, um, in the actual practice, it's also very nice to have, um, because you work with a lot of different artists, so you have experience on different materials and in exploring different mediums and uh, materials, that experience would be very helpful to artists, especially uh, emergent artists like me. Mm. And also, I feel sometimes like it's, it, of course, a different pair of eyes will be interesting. And then sometimes yeah. I feel curator is also like a, a, a container of like contractor <laughs> information sometimes, like especially when right. when um, people are kind of experiencing art uh, more as an experience rather mm. than like an object. Uh, um, oftentimes people, like some various artists want to, um, instead of like making the art themselves, they have like bigger ideas for installations. And then if they don't have the experience making it or like contracting people themselves, then like they come and ask like curators, like, oh, do you have, like, if I want to make this like 10 meter tall uh, installation or outdoor sculpture, like who should I go to? So I feel sometimes like we actually um, get all this different knowledge from different artists we collaborate with, like they recommend. So yeah, in the art world, it's really like the, the flow of information is a lot of oftentimes word of mouth. So like we kind of ha keep a list of, of contractors or collaborators mm. who are really good at certain things. And then if artists need, then they come to us and then we also kind of like distribute the knowledge back to, to different people. So mm. I think that's also like really interesting and um, yeah, and of course we also like learn a lot from mm. uh, artists working in different mediums because I mean I have <laughs> I have no idea on how to make art myself. But then uh, after working with all these different artists, uh, it's just yeah, so mm -hmm. so eye opening. I remember at Emo Gym, um, you mentioned different artists, and there were several commissioned work, and they work with different materials. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the process of a commission work? Yeah, so with with commissioning a new work, um, it's of course like a risky process. So like, but then for me, I because as I mentioned, I follow these artists like for so long, I really have confidence in them. And uh, so um, we, we, of course, first we, we, d we develop the concept, but then uh, there are certain really big scale works that um, we, we are, I feel like I make, 
I'm making the work with the artist um, as an experiment ourselves, kind of. So uh, in the images, you might see like w uh, the work by Michelle Chu, which is this uh, tunnel, but it's actually quite, it's, it m might not look at, as big as the reality, but it's actually like a seven meter tunnel. And uh, it was so interesting because Michelle came up with the concept and then in realizing the uh, work, uh, sh sh we actually involved so many different collaborators. And for me, that was like a really satisfying moment to be able to line up these resources for the artist to enable her to actually create a, the biggest scale um, work she's ever done. So we had, we recommended like an architect and she uh, found a lighting designer. And then also the, uh, there is a, of course the contractor who makes the, the, um, the structure. arch, yeah, the structure, and then there's also a fashion designer who did the um, fabrics. stitching, yeah, okay. the stitching of the fabrics uh, using elastic seams. Mm -hmm. So all these expertise like coming up in together, I feel that was like just a manifestation of the artist um, curator collaboration, how yeah. uh, we, together we could actually make something that neither of us could do mm. alone, of course. And uh, yeah, and with, with, with making this work happen, we actually got rejected by like nine contractors. Wow. And they're just <laughs> like, we've never <laughs> seen something like this. We've never <laughs> made it. I don't think like this proposal is gonna, um, it's gonna work, work, like yeah. it's gonna collapse. Mm -hmm. And of course you have to make sure of the safety of the audience, but then Michelle was really persistent and she actually ended up making like a one point, uh, uh, like one to five ratio model and to show to the contractor that it, 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 it actually works. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was also kind of the bridge between the contractor mm -hmm. and the artist, like kind of convincing uh, the contractor that we can do it, and then also kind of making sure the artist is realistic or 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 right. enable the artist to um, to make it happen. So yeah, in the end, we we're just really like when we finally installed the work with ten people, we were just like so proud that uh, yeah, it actually is now still standing there uh, soundly. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, for me and artists, like sometimes I would not know how to communicate with maybe contractor or um, different uh, people who work in special things. Like, I think if there's a curator, that will be a lot more easier and it's yeah. more effective, efficient. Yeah, I realized like contractor management also becomes like an important role of a curator, like how you keep like trying different contractors and then select the ones that are most reliable and competent and then <laughs> pass on that mm -hmm. knowledge. And then also, yeah, a, a lots of other kinds of relationship management, like of course um, the, the uh, long-term relationships with the artists. I mm -hmm. know, I feel like, uh, yeah, nowadays, especially in contemporary art, there are so many different kinds of curators. Some of them actually uh, treat artists as their biggest treasure. It's like I have a working relationship with like all these artists that are actually hard to uh, reach out to or mm -hmm. like gallery relationship management. Uh, so there, yeah, there are, are so many, so many things that like curators could focus on or I know like curators that are more like really hands on in the installation of a show or there are curators who just write the, write the piece and write the curatorial statement and they actually mm. are, don't even like touch, um, set foot in the gallery installation process. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this this relationship is such an interesting um, area yeah. that uh, I guess different artists mm. and curators could all have different experience in. Yeah. And maybe we can also like open the floor um, open the question to the floor and see if you have, you want to share your own experience or have questions for Donny or myself. Oh. Hi, hi, Arian and Donny. Thank you for the talk. I was just really curious on how long does it actually take for you to conceptualize an exhibition and for it to actually come to life like is it a really long time or does it really depend on you know like whether how available the artists are and mm. um, 
I just wonder, is it like a really long, long-term process, or sometimes it really depends? Yeah. Um, is this is a question for yeah, yeah for both. both? I remember you came to me like uh, talk about the emo dream was like half a year ago Be or before longer. before the original opening time yes. of the exhibition. Which so it was like last summer. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for curator it must take a lot. Especially it's a group exhibition, then it would take a lot more time. Yeah, so I think that process was kind of like in the middle of my preparation timeline. So I conceptualized the theme about two uh, or one and a half year ago. And then I was just kind of thinking in my mind with this like Lego placement, you know, what kind of artist and, and also what kind of mediums like to balance them. So then, um, yeah, so the whole process, it, uh, because in this exhibition I was pretty clear, I wanted to um, be able to enable um, emerging or like close to like established artists to make new works. So I made sure I really reach out to them pretty early on. So some artists I talked to them uh, already like about two years ago, and for for the longer like the more complicated um, production time, because mm -hmm. of course we also want to allow different. Like like the Michelle Chu project, like different collaborators to have enough time to to do their part, and um, yeah. So uh, for I'm I'm actually quite proud. They are they're all really making full use of that amount of time to do their research, and I think in in this um, current time, it's a rare quality for the artist to actually spend so much time uh, researching and not just kind of repeating a series they, or a style they're comfortable with, and then really uh, digging into the theme, uh, being quite honest with themselves, and then even exploring new mediums or new styles like Donnie did. Um, so yeah, that's th actually one of my main goals in this exhibition too. Thank you. Thank you. Is there... Oh. Hello, thank you for the sharing. And I actually have a question um, about the curating uh, between all the different artists because uh, you mainly share about your independent uh, or uh, individual relationship with Donny. I was interested how relationship was negotiated between all the artists in the group exhibition that you curated. Thank you. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, thank you. This is a really interesting question. I feel I'm still kind of like really navigating uh, this field because uh, in this exhibition, uh, at the beginning of the planning, I already know I will have three uh, works, video installations with pretty uh, big sound. And with the floor plan being quite like an open space, uh, just with like a half wall in between, I know the sounds would definitely travel uh, and affect other people's work. But then luckily, um, we had a pretty long timeline. And um, so I actually got all three artists to be on site. So we actually took advantage of the, uh, the changeover period in Diagon Contemporary. So the space was pretty empty. And they all came with like a sample uh, sound of their work. And then we, we pull out like the speakers they have decided to use. And we literally like had them all of, all of them there and then making sure like the angles are correct and make sure they actually like accept how their their, their sound are going to interact and it turned out like and before that w we were all a bit nervous because of course as like an artist you want to make sure your work has its integrity and also as a curator of course I want the best for each of the works uh, so we were nervous but then actually when we we're there we were like oh the, 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 the sound of the different works actually uh, can can coexist pretty nicely because they are all none of them is like super disturbing uh, at least at that volume it, it, the artist wanted it to be and so and also conceptually it kind of all are like abstract noises or like street noises or like mm, melody like simple melodies so yeah like so yeah I, I think that was like a happy ending for everyone in the end yeah and then also when I place the different works, um, so I, I think sometimes in group exhibitions, like uh, artists get involved and they don't actually know what other artists are showing. And for me, and then, and then they, when, when they actually walk into the installation, they realize, oh my God, like 
how, why is my work like in this kind of situation? So to avoid that, I actually get all the artists together last summer, and then they visualize a, a little bit on yeah. site. Yeah. Yes, and then we also had a like a gathering, so everyone kind of like shared about their latest idea, and then so everyone had a pretty good understanding of what's gonna happen, and I think that also really helped. And I, I don't think any of them hates each other now, <laughs> so. Thank, Thank you. you. And how are we doing? If, if, if there's no more questions, question. are we gonna go into the fishbowl session now? Okay, so do you wanna pick one? <laughs> I'll pick one for you. <laughs> How do you deal with difficult, different, or opposing ideas? Well, I think this is more towards curation, right? I, I think I've talked enough today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe one Next question one. for you. How do you differentiate and collaborate on shared ideas and themes? Uh, we Are we gonna go through well. like all ten <laughs> questions to like something for the artist? This is also oh, this one we already answered. It's not like we don't like this question. Oh my god! Okay, commissioning a new piece of work. I think mm, maybe I can share a little bit more yeah. on that um, because uh, I think. I didn't do so much commissioned work before, so it was a new try for me f to work with uh, Emu Dreams exhibition. Yeah, and um, I think the communication is kind of important. Like I just make sure everything that I do, it's uh, it's also something that you would want instead of uh, sticking back to the original path of what I did more towards the exterior world or something like that. And also, um, um, I was talking to you about the, I was trying this new paint, like this black, matte black paint, which- The most um, black yes. paint in the whole world. <laughs> I guess they keep uh, having some Darker Black, okay. and darker paint. So, uh, but you were so uh, supportive on that idea as well. So that had made the commission work. Um, yeah, realized at the end. So it's quite good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we only you. have three or four um, questions <laughs> left, but I think we touched quite a bit about yeah those questions already. So. So um, if there's if no, there's oh, there's no one more question, okay. Thank you for sharing. Um, you talked a, a lot about the relationship between curator and the artist. Could you share with us the support or limits that institutions have on this relationship? Maybe the museum itself or for artists, perhaps the galleries? I, I don't know whether you are attached to one. Thank you, Nicole. Really interesting question. Um, I guess from my point of view, as of course, yeah, I'm, uh, I've actually worked in different kinds of institutions. Uh, Daegun Contemporary is a nonprofit institution supported by Jockey Club. Um, and then previously I was uh, organizing our events at Dado's, which is like completely different, like a private uh, restaurant and art club. So yeah, like definitely like the kind of institution um, or whether it like people work work as an independent curator really affects the the, the relationship too and not, of course that's limitations on those um, dynamics. Like recently I'm also thinking about how like of course, you know, with any kind of relationship there's power dynamics and then by kind of going through our contract with the artist, like um, because we have like a kind of standard template and then mm -hmm. we kind of as institutions have to think about how to protect um, ourselves. And then, so I, I don't know from like the perspective of an artist, whether it's really stressful to read like a eight page. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> commission <laughs> agreement and you know, trying I to understand all the yeah. nitty gritty. Yeah, yeah, but um, your team really had explained the 
the eight pages to me. And also, <laughs> I think there are a lot more um, paperwork. Everything needs to be documented. Documented, kind of. yeah, emails and also yeah. to approve something, yeah. Yeah, I feel if like with the independent curator uh, maybe working um, like uh, in a gallery, a gallery, the the approval process is probably space. not, yeah, not mm. as complicated as yeah. us. Like for us, we uh, receive a proposal from the artist, and then of course we have a committee, like a program committee, um, that oversees our programming directions. So you know, like the curator doesn't have the hundred percent. Uh, say, uh, or like, yeah, like the whole process is actually much more complicated. So there could be back and forth with this commissioning process. Mm. Um, and there are different yeah. teams like finance or just overall yeah. management, something like that. So there are a lot more communication going on between different departments, I think. Yeah, and then for, for artists who are not used to that kind of administration processes, they might find it kind of like, distracting them from the last few months when they're, they really try to focus on the <laughs> actual making of the work. Um, but then, yeah, I guess Curator is also there to help smooth yeah. this whole processes. Um, but yeah, like definitely I feel uh, the institution, of course, uh, kind of yeah, really affects that, mm. that relationship for, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we have time for one last quick question, if there's anything else. And, okay. Yeah. Hi, thank you very much for the sharing. It's very interesting. Um, I have a question on money. Um, I'm just wondering how, whether you can say something, but how do you, um, perhaps Aaron, how do you, um, from the curator's perspective, how do you control and manage the budget, especially when you're curating an exhibition with a, a group of artists? I, I would imagine that you will be trying and testing out some ideas with the artists, and sometimes it may not work as well as you have expected. And then you have to try it again. And then the budget may be exceeded. And then um, would you need to, from time to time, go back to the sponsor or a funder and ask for more money? And how do you deal with these challenges? Yeah, uh, thank you. Really good questions. Um, I, I would say if I were working elsewhere, it would have been like, maybe like a bigger issue. Um, at Daikun Contemporary, we're like fully supported by the Jockey Club. And then so um, if we don't actually have to do like the individual fundraising part per se, you know, like I know uh, w with independent projects, sometimes like each artist might have to do their own fundraising for new, new works. But then with us, it's f for me, yeah, really, it's like that budget management. And then I learned a lot from my colleagues who always have that like 10 to 20% contingency in your budget when you write the uh, initial budget. So when th that the, the in it inevitably happens, you know, like a new commission uh, doesn't work out and then it ends up taking much more money and then that's when the contingency comes into play. So with this project, actually, I, yeah, I wanted to spend a lot of budget on the new commissions and, and on the works themselves. So actually with other aspects of the exhibition, we tried to cut costs. So we actually, you know, tried um, cheaper graphic designer, cheaper architects and everything and tried to give the artists more space to really experiment. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, yeah. Erin and Donnie. That was really interesting. Thank, thank you all. Thank, thank you all for staying. Yes, thank you.